Okay, cool. Um, Victor, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you guys are going to show and what you're doing? Yeah, I can talk a bit about View Polkadot, how it actually started. We were talking with Mati in Progress Bar about Polkadot and the whole software ecosystem. And Mati doesn't know React okay. well. I was previously a React developer. So I said to him, why, why well, is that problem to create a React for you? And he was like, yeah, it would be better for me and for other people to go to Substrate from Vue. Because Vue, from my point of view, it's, it's lighter than React. So we started working on Vue, Vue Polkadot. Um, we had several kind of issues with like bootstrapping view, how we need to learn a lot of things, which I'm great, really grateful for. And, yeah, and cool. what we actually created, we mimic the polka.js org slash apps. So we got accounts, transfer democracy, actually extrinsics implemented or also explorer is like work in progress and we need to make a lot of packages for Vue to to make development seamless such as view settings which is a module for views i'll mention it later and also we created a view api which is also a module for b better better using of api things we could do make the interjections as a project. So yeah, we, in the first milestone, we've been doing like uh, hassling with the key ring because it includes some uh, React components of actually Spark some very own. So we probably, yeah, we used most of the code. Then we had to use, reuse the identity code for view right now. And then we, the wiki developed the setting Spark. And then we can start uh, building these uh, dashboards, the second milestone. So what you see right now here is actually the account section. And we just got the basic functionality right now. So actually you can create your account like, uh, and it's like supports all the mnemonic and rouse it, which is generated out of the way and requires the password as well. Then we using the derivation path from the keyring uh, section to derivate the key for the, your stage account, their control account, and something like that, what you need right now. We'd like probably somehow um, make it more programmatic in the way to generate it, because uh, a lot of these parts were recycled for my previous project called uh, subkey.netlify.com. And this pretty much that's it, that was easy part. And then you have some uh, text. So this is like how accounts uh, work. Maybe you are familiar from the normal dashboard from polka.gsr. And then we added also functionality for the filter and name of some numbers. And, oh, and it doesn't work right now. And, oops, well there, normally it works. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you console, we would never know. Well there. Live demos. Then we just implemented uh, all the things like you had the uh, forget accounts uh, backup uh, thing. Then when you need to type your password again, and you just get the uh, backup uh, in JSON. We just try to follow all the standards that uh, Polkadot have right now. So we actually need to somehow the reverse the what the Polkadot GS generates because there is like no documentation for that. It was like pretty wild. So <laughs> it was literally just reading the code. And then we have like a restore and I can show up uh, if you can restore the account. I don't know, there is, uh, for example, this one. And oh, uh, you can see the, how the account looks like. I don't know if you zoom out, or you just zoom for me. So you can see the how the JSON looks like in the JSON account. So you get like the metadata type of the encryptions, which uh, key generation was used which kind of the type. Uh, recently, there was added the version finally. So actually you can track the data format. And recently, since the version from September, there was included the Genesis hash, which is actually right now only for Kusama and uh, probably, yeah, just for Kusama if I'm right. And when created and when edited, edited, and that, that is so, and you just make it and restart. Yeah, so, so it's, it's right okay, there. Okay, I, I have a question. 
Mm -hmm. so this looks a lot uh, like you said, you know, sort of modeled after the Polkadot.js apps. And then I guess that's written in React, right? And yours is yes. written in Vue. And so like, is it possible, like, so you just created this account called like presentation account and exported it or backed it up, I guess. I see it in your download. Yes, 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 yes. it works, yeah. You yeah, can, I can like, like. Import that back into Polkadot.js apps or like vice versa, create one there and import it here. Yes, 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 that works. I can just demonstrate it uh, here to restore. And uh, the one was to create it there. And, and this is the same password you yeah. created in your yeah. app? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that great. Okay, cool. So you, and you said you had to reverse engineer that JSON format that you just showed us? Well, there's like a missing standardization because we consider it to apply for some URI for the, I, I mostly came up with the parity signer like mm -hmm. in, in the summer because mm -hmm. I read uh, there are a lot of code, how it works and what they're trying to achieve. And I came up with the, some offline signer or something like that. And then we actually, literally came up with that we can actually start doing the dashboard. So that was the part we applied for the grants and start uh, making it. So that was it. Cool. And yeah, and that time there was open issue in April that somebody is looking for the view implementation. And previously I, I've been mostly a view front end developer. And so we just start. So that was it. <laughs> yeah, cool. And, and we we'll, we'll like quite really nice. So actually the address book is really the same as the accounts, but just the there's less features from the, I don't know, this, this copy from here. And uh, so you can read it well. And oh, but somehow it doesn't validate the address. Oh, yeah. Uh, another problem is that the, with the SS58 uh, format address, there is actually not much documentation how the addresses are generated and uh, what are the bits and bytes there and the keyring actually sometimes doesn't follow that the rules which is generated in the substrate or in the sub key in the rust uh, utility so mm -hmm. i think there is still some misaligned so sometimes it actually generates the different uh, public key address than different uh, address so so actually we actually there's like things which actually there's open issues for it so hope yeah. it will be resolved pretty soon so yeah, and as you may be, you know that there is actually, you can uh, generate uh, for particular address have their prefixes that's in the settings. And it's, uh, yeah, there is like the prefixes uh, for substrates 42 if I'm right, for Kusama is uh, uh, one or two if I'm right, and for Polkadot is zero or one if I'm right. So this actually could be found in the code. And that we actually we follow for what we have here. And okay. And then you have like, uh, right now I can tell from the presentation, I got, I don't know, for the Pauset account, I got some balance for the Kusama, and I can just uh, send for the presentation account. And I can, oh, we can just fix it up because it's assets, we need to fix it. And uh, right now, the, we just need to fix the denomination, if I'm right. Okay. Uh, One or this is like 100 milli. And wait for a while. Uh, and we just want to make the default uh, dialog, which is right now in the bulk of the GS uh, app that you go through sign. And we would like to probably, if the time allows, to add the ledger integration or something like that. So actually, you can, this dialog could be configured on your ledger. But actually, it's like now on low prior or something like that. Yeah. So, because all now signing is uh, happening in the memory of the browser right now. So, yeah. And uh, and sometimes it doesn't go past through. And. Disparate. Oops. <laughs> okay. So maybe the wiki's code will be much better than mine, but we are the same page probably. So, yeah. Okay, so normally it actually goes through, so yeah. And yeah, the one pain point we had during the development was uh, types on the Kusama because they have been ever evolving. Uh, but recently with the Substrate version 2, actually you can uh, fetch the types from the chain. So I'm looking forward this feature will be available in the Polkadot.js because we are literally just building all these APIs on top of the Polkadot.js API right now. 
Yeah, I was wondering about that, right? So you're replacing the part that's apps because it's all React and you're replacing that uh, with this view stuff, but the underlying Polkadot API is still being used here. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Because actually the we we don't have like any insights uh, what's like upcoming features in the, let's say the substrates because a lot of APIs are short-lived and some of them are rewriting. So actually we are not capable to uh, watch every changes or something like that because there's like yeah. a lot of stuff happening even in the GS level. So we'd like to just uh, follow up this GS and uh, yeah, looking forward. Yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Cool, so mm -hmm. that was actually the my part of the thing. And yeah, what we are looking forward is like uh, bring all these things so you can build your separate uh, modular component and then probably the white label this app so actually anybody can build like the, some boilerplate of the VGS that was like original vision. They would like we stick with that. Yeah, yeah, so that's, <laughs> so I have some follow-up yeah. questions here like, I, when I first encountered Polkadot.js apps, I was like, oh, it's so cool with these tabs on the side and like I can just add one for, you know, whatever palette I've added to my runtime. Oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. Like I, I yeah. think that's true still, but I've never figured out how to do it in Polkadot.js. But I don't know like how easy it is here or if you want to show us like some code or like what does it take to add a tab there? And how does that uh, right now, uh, we got, uh, where is it? Uh, Right now we got like, for example, yes, the Explorer could be like much easier because we just started working on that. And you can reach this, uh, uh, that's these. And yeah, for example, you got like some uh, node info or something like that. And you can see details, just recent. And oh, uh, you got from Explorer, we got using this part of APIs. And uh, we got like uh, API wrapper where you require the, the chain peers, the base number and all these, and we just pass it to the prop. So yeah, we would like to, we are trying to think about it so anybody could uh, forecast and reuse our code pretty easily. So yeah, now that was like the draft code, because this is not done. So we're just playing around and this is a uh, part of the API code. I, I think the part that uh, we will be showing up is the democracy. It's uh, quite heavy here. And there is like a, there's like a submission, applications, let me check it. Or yeah, everything is like built on the top of extrinsics. Even the transfer is actually just extrinsics. And I think, I think I can uh, let it play the week and start sharing the screen, so. Mm, so what's actually behind extrinsics? Um, Oh, here we are, cool. And so we use, as Val mentioned, we use Polkadot.js API, but we wrap it into our own uh, view API. It's a singleton wrapper for API because we wanted to ensure there is only one single connection with, between the user and the node. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are using it. And also the big advantage of this singleton approach is that that we could uh, seamlessly connect or switch between the nodes. So if the user decides to switch between Usama or GLI coin, it's, it's simple. He doesn't need to he doesn't need to reload the whole page. If you if you saw it on polkadotjs org slash apps, that when you change the settings, you need to reload like the whole application, and that's what we want to avoid. So that's why we created View API and also our own View settings. And let's get back to the extrinsics. So. As we see, we got two, two select boxes. One is for methods and one is from extrinsic and second one is for method. And it's like from view, it, I'll, I fetch, fetch data from API, 
with selected function section, which is the first so which is the first select box, then to values, value and arcs. Did what what it means? If I select balances, for example, and also transfer, it will automatically generate the arguments. For example, address and balance. It's it's rec it's called recursively because some of the some of the arguments are recursive. For example, vector or hash map or something like that is also implemented in substrate. So sometimes it's called recursively which was also like a big development thing to learn lazy load in Vue. So this extrinsics, I could send, for example, balance to Val if he will send me address or I could send Maybe create an address book or an or account. I can send this. Uh, there was a balances transfer from okay, cool. And value is like let's say thousand. Okay. Okay, so I got successful transfer. We can view it actually. Why is oh, it? Oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> we still got it's still, it's, it's still the thing in development. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's like I mean, seminar is all about stuff like still in development. So, no problem. <laughs> yep. Uh, the link to the block explorer is a great idea. Yeah, that's what I wanted to find. Here is it. Uh, oh yeah, there is the balance of the transfer was called right now, so awesome. Yeah, way to go. So yeah. So extrinsic was also a big thing and what we wanted to fo really focus on as Matty mentioned was to create to create modularity between those components. So we also reuse the argument in in democracy. So we could look at the democracy right now. So it's, as we see, it's fetching live the launch period. So it's kind of cool thing. Here we can, uh, as like on the original apps, apps we could submit proposals, submit pre-image and we have referendums here, it's kind of cool. And this is what we actually reused, is like the, all, is the original argument as you saw on, on extreme six. So it's still same component with different properties, so. Yeah, so with it, so you're looking at democracy stuff right now and I, I know that the democracy module is a little bit of a complex one. So like, I think you, make a proposal by submitting a pre-image hash and then later you submit the pre-image. So like if you guys are, sub are are displaying that value, that 180, like the new validator count, does that mean, like what happens if there's no pre-image or how are you grabbing all that data? Uh, if there is no pre-image um, proposal, oh, why? there is no icons. Mm. Wow. Okay, this is new. Whatever. Uh, if there is no pre-image, we've got the button here, which is not implemented yet. But yeah, we okay, okay. Like that. So user would be able to submit his pre-image. Also, mm -hmm. the user can second select his proposal. And as you see, it is almost the same. So yeah. Also, we see the list of seconds. Oh, this is part. And also the other components such as address, balance, and yeah, great. Yeah, very, very good. So where can we find the code? Uh, we 
you can find the code on github.com slash view polkadot slash apps. I can show it. That's the polkadot slash apps. This is like the whole uh, dashboard panel. Yeah, and, that's basic to do. <laughs> and the other tools can be found in a view, view polkadot slash view UI. And we've got, as I mentioned, we've got many packages from Identicon, API, keyring, and also settings. Yeah, that's cool. So that's a lot of useful primitives too. So I could like, um, if I wanted to make like a command line interface, like I guess, oh, that doesn't make that much sense with Vue, I guess, but like maybe I could use the key ring and API to like make my own interface if I don't want to use your apps one or something like that. But still you can reuse those those packages in command line interface because mostly it's not written in view, it's written in TypeScript. So you can also re reuse it in no project. Yeah, cool. It, it was created to help us with the view development, but you can also use it in original node projects on, or in the React project cool. if you like it. And also what was the thing that you can add as I, as I mentioned, when we created our own view settings, we can add our own node. Oh, they have that, they have that link for Glickcoin. Hey everybody, it's Future Joshi. I just wanted to stop in and give a little context to what we're about to see. At a meetup last week, I launched a substrate-based chain called Glickcoin, and I had posted about it in Riot before we started this seminar call. So we're going to use the view polka dot tools that we just learned to make some transfers on Klecoin. It's a proof of work network that just does a simple cryptocurrency. And you can add actually a new, so we can select now GLI and go to Explorer and we are here. Okay. Oh, wow. Without, so without reloading. Okay, so you can see that like on this chain, we've mined 56,000 blocks and you can see like my spec name, CLE coin main net. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. And I think if you click on the node info, you should get the peer blocks and then like, uh, yeah. So I'm thinking it's false, the node. The total peers probably doesn't count from the node. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. A new block just got mined. Yeah, total peers, there might only be one or two nodes online right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the uh, hard problem is that uh, in the Polka GS app, we came up with that the counting all the peer nodes is pretty hard because we need to do all the computation in the browser side. So yeah. we came up with some uh, efficient way to count it or something like that because we had that feature inside it, but actually the stuck the loop uh, for the counting all the nodes because you need to fetch each node what the, the peer block is and the counting and mapping. And so actually, if you got like I don't know sixty plus nodes, you connect it through WebSockets to every node, so actually load your network. So oh, I'd like need to come with yeah, yeah. connections to more than one node from this UI. Yeah, for 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 that, uh, if you, yeah, when we have been reversing the the, G, the the portal for the Polka the GS apps, then we find out that actually they're connecting, the sparking a lot of the web sockets to other nodes. So actually, we we just need to come up with the efficient way to count it together or something like that. So yeah. 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 Totally. Okay. Maybe it would be nice if if there would be some uh, API to count the nodes on the through the through the node API or something like that and not and offload it to the node. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you guys want to try an experiment? I'm curious, like, if you want to create an account here and I'll try to send you some Klee coin and see if it goes through. Yeah. Well, try at least. Yeah, no, why not? It's just, it's a test net, you know? <laughs> yeah, so create an account and send me your address and I'll, I'll get set up and make a transfer. Create account. Coin master. That's nice. Cool. Okay, so this is my address. Also, one of the features that we'd like to add to the account was like the add that you through QR codes or something like that. Because now we are missing the visual feature that how you can add the codes, uh, add the address to your accounts. So we're looking forward to implement this thing as well. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I, I guess I just have to connect to the same node here. Uh, Cleveland. Uh, 
bootnodes.net. So I, I live in Cleveland, Ohio, for those who don't know. So that's what the like nice. smelly in the Cleveland is about. And I, I launched this chain for a, um, like just a local meetup. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, but it looks like I'm not going to connect, I guess. You got that URL. You need also slash. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. No. <laughs> I'm glad that someone knows how <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks good. And that's about the same block height you had. So um, so I've got a couple of accounts here and I guess we might as well clear these funds out of Alice. Okay, so I've got your address. And so I'm just gonna send, oh, not that one. I'll send them from Alice to you. And then, oh, I don't remember how many she had, but let's just try like 100,000. So I guess like if anyone is pretty new to Polkadot, maybe you've never seen either of these UIs, but now you can see what they both look like. And then now, so this is a proof of work chain. And like we saw like a bunch of, there used to be more nodes and now there aren't as many. So we're waiting for <laughs> nodes to be mined, but we can just look at the telemetry too. Oh yeah, so it's only my one boot node, and it looks like oh, that's not twelve seconds isn't so bad. So maybe we'll. But but it's interesting. Why there is the finalized block? Why is it zero? Oh yeah, so I'm using proof of work mining, and there's so no. Hazard is not finalized. Okay. Like grandpa or anything. Yeah. Hmm. So that means like if you if or if anyone comes out with a chain that's like sixty thousand blocks long, we'll reorganize to it. <laughs> So, um, okay, so that went out. I think it was in this block. Yeah, I've got funds already. Oh, sweet. Sh yeah, show us. Yeah, sure. I can share the screen again. And as you see, I got the, I got the funds, actually. Awesome. <laughs> uh, cool, That's so we can play with now. Yeah, now. somehow you have some of my shit going. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what a joy. Oh yeah, does anybody else want something? <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Cool, yeah. Uh, so like, ser I'm, I'm trying to be like a tiny bit serious about Kleecoin. I'm going to go back to the meetup next next month and tell them like, hey, it's still running if anyone wants to like, run it and see if I can make it a thing. And in the meantime, I'm just like slowly mining one block at a time. So. Yeah, if you want to put an address down, I would send some. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to show us? This is awesome. I'm super happy to see it working with like all kinds of different chains and everything. Yeah. We we are excited too that it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially like <laughs> you know, I sort of pressured you guys into doing a demo you'd never even tried before and it totally Yeah, uh, no, um oh uh, yeah, uh Actually, we had the thing that the project was like uh, for a while on hold because uh, I've been researching more to do regarding the star mesh. And uh, actually, you can reach the project, the star mesh XYZ. And we just uh, occurred that the keyring had a few breaking changes. So actually, we had to update the lips. And uh, there was also some breaking changes in the API. So actually, that was a really hurdle to actually hold us back for a while. So actually, we just lost that, I don't know two, three weeks or something like that. So we are just uh, composing the API back into work on working state, so. Yeah, were, were you yeah. saying star mesh? Yeah, the star mesh. Yeah, you think about the observation and parachain. Yeah, I, I, I've been far beyond the shilling it that much because they yeah, had the friends of, around me are too full that bit. Uh, but I, I can show you the link. It was the star mesh XYZ. And we actually would like to gather the art observation data from uh, various data vendors and well, okay, so if I'm already pitching, let's pitch it. So yeah, we'd like to create the parachain and we would like to leverage the our observation data with the file coin integration with the storage. And we'd like to deduct some uh, fee to the data vendors and the star mesh and for the network at all. And we'd like to leverage all the Web3 primitives. So actually anybody like the, there's like a machine learning studios could build the well edited uh, assets on top of the art observation data. And they could sell it like to some current bonding uh, for cheaper way or pricier, whatever 
you name it. Yeah, cool. uh, we'd like to enable these things. And actually, we would like to focus on the insurance and the finance. We, we recently got some lead from the insurance segment. So we just getting data from them with great resolution. So we probably introduced them as our first demo and as working examples. So yeah, and we actually are, we'll be working in, I don't know, upcoming three, six months to write some default uh, trade example. And that's pretty much, that's it. So yeah. And yeah, and we actually would like to leverage the, the Polka.DAO on the protocol level. So actually there will be like technical committees uh, from these data vendors and they can actually include their uh, various data sets or so because in this uh, GIS, uh, space, there's like every company almost got their own format or something like that. So there's a lot of things. So any, any, if somebody's looking on this from the recording, any geonair, their geonair is actually welcome. So reach us and give us some follow and probably we eventually deliver. So, <laughs> so yeah. And yeah, I would like actually reuse this uh, view Polkadot as well for ourselves. So we, we will be reused for our interface or something like that. Yeah, great. So Good. that's actually our uh, things too. We want to white label so anybody else could use uh, our work and we can actually leverage this work for our, ourselves as well. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, yeah, the main goal of the star merge is that we'd like to bring the lightweight integration for the file coin to the substrate. So yeah, we we're actually now on the technical specifications. So yeah, looking forward. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. So, uh, so okay, so now the question is, what should we do next? And there's, there's two options. I could do a code tour of CLE coin and we could look at some proof of work stuff. Or uh, if Kian is still um, sitting here, we could do the Fragman demo. Oh, it looks like he is. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, we can. It's, uh, I don't have a preference, but uh, I checked your, your setup for boot notes from last week, and there were, I think they were not running. So They're not running right now. Yeah, I'll just have <laughs> to start them. Hey there, future Josh again. So we thought that launching this network was going to be quick, and then we could see all of the fragment behavior. And in reality, it took us a while, and we had trouble peering, and even with some simple stuff like purging the chain. Uh, the reality is when you practice this stuff a lot, sometimes you still run into issues like that. Um, so I'm going to actually leave the entire recording in because there are useful tidbits in there and maybe someone who's just starting with Substrate will find some of this stuff useful. Uh, it's not the most exhilarating watch ever, but it is in here and we learned some cool tools along the way. Kian shows us some nice tricks with Docker and some tools to simulate like network partitions and stuff. So in some sense, it's actually good that we ran into trouble so that we could explore some of these tools. Yeah, I'll get yeah. the boot nodes running and you can just talk for a minute or a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah a few minutes would be enough. Um, so um, off-chain fragment would be a uh, mechanism to allow, allow us to run, uh, elect our validators uh, in a more efficient way. Uh, now we have this election algorithm called uh, fragment and we run it at the end of each era and it's super expensive. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's quite expensive to uh, to to compute. Let me organize my desktops. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, uh, sometimes like our block time spikes to 12, 16, 18 seconds, and one of the suspects is fragment. So what we do instead from now on is different entities, either normal users or um, or validators, can submit their solutions back to the chain. Um, so what they do is they use the substrates off-chain worker feature, uh, which is a sort of a one-time thread that dispatches from the runtime and it never comes back. So it can run indefinitely. It doesn't need to finish within the boundaries of the block time. And uh, all validators would dispatch one run off-chain worker thread, which would compute um, the fragment result and then submit it back to the chain as a unsigned transaction. Um, this is one variant and normal users can also do the same and submit a solution. Um, and uh, the only way that we can demo it right now or, or the only thing that we can see is um, that normally when we, yeah, that, that, that we can run we can run a chain and as soon as we have two or more nodes, 
we should be able to see a log in staking which says a new fragment like it says um oh well first it says an election window has been opened it means that submissions are now allowed a few blocks later it says oh so a solution has been received and then eventually when the block uh, when the error is finished it says um a new authority set or validator set has been selected based on something that we received from the outer world um and maybe something else that we can also do is um we can so so this is only allowed uh, to be submitted by validators if i run a node um and i force it to run the off-chain worker code but it's not within the validator set then we see a error message which says is that hey you're like we received a solution but it, it's not coming from a validator so we rejected it yeah, we can we can see this stuff um yeah i'm i'm i mean we, we talked about it for i think a solid 90 minute last week i'm not sure how um yeah yeah so let's uh, like i want to do it i can't do it. okay yeah sure if you want to do it then let's do it <laughs> yeah, let's do it for sure. I mean, I'm it's not much of a demo. It's just more of an observation, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is uh, connected to Alice's node. I have two nodes running. And oops. And um, I there's an interesting thing I noticed right now that I wanted to talk about. That's like tangential to the fragment stuff, but is a good thing to know if you develop on Substrate. And it's the oh, I can't scroll here. That's okay. It's these errors, like uh, babe error with that block. And uh, earlier, if I could scroll up, it said like unexpected. Oh, yeah, in fact, it's right here. Like unexpected epoch change. And yeah. this happens when you have a babe-based chain. So babe is the block authoring. And all of the authorities are offline for more than one epoch. Then this happens. And so like, Kian, I don't know. There's no reason why I can't just purge the chain and start over. No, I just purge it. It's fine. Okay. I mean, that's, that's what I do when I see this uh, unexpected epoch change. I don't think there's a way to, yeah. Yeah, luckily in our case, we like really don't have anything useful on that chain yet. <laughs> so I'm just going to. Except if it happens on production chain. Yeah, so the thing is with a production chain, it shouldn't happen because like the idea of a production chain is that you have your nodes online or like at least one node is online at some point during the epoch. And you know, like if they're not, they're supposed to get slashed and stuff. But like with yeah, this but thing- something happens that so stalls the chain for uh, for an hour, then this might be a problem. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how one would handle but it. Stalling would be different than uh, than everyone going offline. If everyone decides that let's leave right now, let's shut off, shut down our computers and leave. I think then that's that's a big damage. But everyone, if everyone, if if the chain is stalled and finalization is not working, then babe works fine. Oh yeah, right. It's different than a finality stall for yeah, sure. Yeah. So if because the question was, what if we stall for two days or something? I mean, I think Kusama has been stalled for long periods at times yeah. already. Days and, at yeah. a time, the one time. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So this is good. It looks like it's running again. Nineteen blocks, and then um, I. Oh, let's see. This was just called local test net, so we'll just see if yeah, we, can we don't have. I think we don't have telemetry or we do uh no it looks like not these are different alice and bob yeah, yeah, yeah. Thousand blocks. okay so they're not there no problem but uh so, we're running yeah so what do i do or do you want to take the screen share uh, since, you're, since you're so keen on it let's i would uh, we'll, we you can do it from we can do it from your station let's look at the log for, logs first just uh just uh take a look at them for now um and so uh, if you scroll up to the very top of the chain, can you do that? Like when the, the uh, things... Oh, okay. Well, here's what we'll do, though. Uh, I can just start Bob's not in screen, and then I'll be able to scroll like it's the 21st century. <laughs> Does, do you see what you want here, or is it gone? Uh, but uh, it's, it's already gone. doesn't matter. Uh, let's just wait for um, the, next, uh, the next epoch change, and... Just see the, the logs. This is running with uh, else taking trace, right? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I can check for sure. Um, 
Whoops. This is how I started it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's Bob's node. So do we have, uh, when should an error change? I mean, I don't remember what we set for the number of uh, the length of the epoch. We can check it from, from your polka dots. So yeah, from there, if you go to staking here. Okay, so around... Should have around, three more blocks, I guess. But that's epoch, then we should uh, wait another one. Uh, but if you go around block 40, if you scroll up where block 40 was imported, then we should see some stuff from staking here if everything is correct. There's some uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, like it should come from like... Uh, the blue should be different, right? No, no, the one the one not after it, but the one after it. Like name of the module. Well, some of them are babe, some of them are substrates, yeah. Okay, so we don't have it here, but we can go further down around block 40. There's gonna be another Another error change. Or around block 80, probably. Yeah, 80. Which we are not that far from. Yeah. So now this is running two nodes. And what's going to happen is both nodes are validators. And they're going to submit solutions. There's going to be technically a warning thing. Ah, yeah, we have one here. Um, yeah, so can you see it now there? Like info from staking? A few Higher lines below. Lower, lower, lower. Oh, yeah, there you are. Yeah, so, but there should be more earlier saying that someone submitted a solution. So this is just saying that we selected a new set of validators and this solution came from an authority. It wasn't selected on chain and it wasn't also submitted by a normal user. It came from an authority. But earlier, there must be a log from earlier which says a solution was received. Um, you can maybe do like, um, uh, no, you can't do yeah, that now. Yeah, I should have echoed all of this out to a file so we could see. Yeah, exactly. It. Then we could. <laughs> should I start doing that right now so that we get the rest of them? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, but then you need to, no, no, no. This, you need to do that thing where you pipe STD out to 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 because these these logs are going to standard error you know they're not oh, standard error. oh I did they're still popping up here that's yeah yeah uh, anybody remember that you have to do two or I think at the end of the command you do m not there but at the very end yeah you do ampersand yeah bigger like that crate thingy uh, bigger sign the, this thingy. You know, the, the, the bigger sign. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, this greater than, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. And then, I think then two, and again, pipe uh, bigger sign one. That's how they do it, I think. Yeah, but there's no pipe in between. There's not, <laughs> no need for the, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Yeah, same. Okay. Well, then we Google it up. Um, I think that might be what we want. Yeah, I, no, but if you're seeing it here, it means that it's not... Uh, oh, ah. and, uh, oh, it's still running in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I send it to you in the chat. And we should do it. Okay. Yeah, something, my CPU is going nuts and my mouse okay. seems. You <laughs> probably need to stop that first. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's good. Um, I might have to do uh, what Mate did earlier. And just pop out. Yeah, go. Because uh, I don't have control anymore. Okay, I got to pop out and back in. Sorry, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. 
So while he is gone, I can try and do the same. I'm going to first try. If I succeed, then I will show it from my system. Okay, hello, I made it back. Hello. That's good. Um, okay, so do you want me to try those nodes again or did you take something in the meantime? No, no, I, I was trying, but no, I, I, could, I wasn't ready. Okay. Yes, let's continue what you were doing before. Okay, no problem. I had to actually power down, so that was some intense CPU. <laughs> okay. Um, I have the, the Alice node is still running right there successfully, and I think we can confirm that. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, yeah, so Alice is still running, but not Bob, so we just need to get Bob going. And so what did, did you figure out the command I wanted, or should we just run it? Yeah, it's in the chat for you, and yeah, it's in the chat. Cool. Uh, okay, oh, I don't see it. Can you just send it one more time since I was out? Uh, oh, yeah. Let me... I think you should see it now. Okay, cool. Command arrow out. Okay. And then two arrow error. And that's going to create a file called error for me? That's, yes. Uh, actually, no, it's going to send them all to out. Okay. I think so, yeah. Okay, it gave me my prompt back. Uh, oh, and there's two files, that seems good. And there's stuff in it. Oh, that doesn't seem good though. Well, uh, service client backend IO error. Well, lock file, temp uh, chains, local testnet lock. Okay, do I need to purge my chain then? Try, try cut. Yeah. Uh, out instead of error. Oh, just read. Okay, okay. Nothing. So, in the meantime, I actually ran another node to the same network. And while your nodes are down, I'm actually seeing a log which says the same thing, but it says election has been computed on chain, which probably means both of your nodes are down now. I, I, I oh. think so. Okay, let's double check on Alice. Yeah, and I'm not finalizing anything, so I still have two peers, though. Um, oh, you do? Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. But maybe that's wrong. I'm not sure. So, so I think I just need to attach to uh, Alice's 30897. Oh, maybe it's reattach. Reattach, yeah. Oh, we're getting those babe errors again at this point. Oh. So Alice is still running. Okay, I've killed her. Uh, I've killed Bob. Let's just try them all again. Clear out that log. Clear out that log. Okay, Bob's node is going to run and connect to the, or redirect to the files, and then yeah. Alice's is going to start now, too. Okay. Purge Dallas's chain. Okay, that looks good. Oh, except oh, except Kian, since you have a node running, I synced your chain, which has the babe problem. Oh, so I have to purge as well. Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. 
Tell me when your node's down. It's back up now. Okay. We should probably see it in polka.js app, I think. Um, we should, th there's a list of peers there. And now everything looks okay, I think. At least I'm okay. seeing everything pretty, like everything seems pretty healthy to me. Yeah, looks good to me too. We're at, oh, it says a new epoch five launching at a particular block. Okay, babe error. And we're on block 98 still. Man, somehow we can't get rid of that chain. Mm. That's too bad. That's okay. Too bad. So you were saying there's a list of peers in here somewhere? Yeah, I think so. In the Explorer node info. Total peers two. Okay, so Alice has two peers. Yeah. Okay, that that's probably one of them should be me. But yeah, this is weird that we're not getting rid of that chain. Um, maybe... Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, there's Bob Purge. And then Alice is also running with Purge. Okay, so it says it's deleting the chain there. Let's just read the logs carefully. Maybe it'll tell us what's going on. Yeah. Oh, but it synced back to 98 again. Yeah, so that still wasn't right. Yeah, I'm getting the same as well. Um, okay. So, is can you just kill your node for a second, Keon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it dead? Okay. So let me just start up just Alice. And like, I think what I'm expecting is that she should like have no peers and therefore not author any blocks. And then like, if we get that, then fine. And, and best blocks should be zero. Yeah, but... Darn, she still synced that chain for some reason. Okay. Okay, I have an idea. I'm just gonna uh, give her a totally new temporary working directory. <laughs> okay. Okay, did not exist, that's good. Okay, highest known block zero. That's good. So let's try uh, let's try Bob's also, and I'll give him a new path. Bob two. Okay, I'll do the same for my Dave node as well. Okay, but that shouldn't that that that's not how it works. Yeah, I I agree. That's pretty. <laughs> Like I that. think we're just missing something silly, probably. And yeah, probably. Okay, Alice is online, block zero, all good. That looks great. Bob's coming on. Okay, if everything goes well, then we can swap our screens. Like, I can share, and I, th I think that will be, like, yeah, smoother. Uh, I have everything that I prepared from last week ready. That, that should be okay. Okay, so good, yeah. Can yeah. I run now? My, my uh, yeah, let me just give you the screen share now. They seem to both be running, except for some reason there's still no block authoring. Oh, we got back to block 99 somehow. <laughs> How can that be? Um, okay. Is Can you do the entire thing locally? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of. Let's try it out and see how far we get there. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can still connect to the same node. We won't author blocks, but some yeah. stuff will happen that we can see. Um, let's see, share this desktop. So you can see some stuff. Mm -hmm. So let me first uh, get rid of this. Yes, zoom, add some, okay. Uh, okay. I think you would need to add parentheses to the command because the dot dot perch is connecting with the arrow there, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we let's see. I, I mean, I purge differently. I have a command that removes all of this temp stuff 
entirely. But uh, yeah, let's let's just uh, try and connect to the same chain. And what I have here is I'm piping the output to the same file. I'm running so Joshi had Alice and Bob. I'm running this third node called Dave. Uh, when you run it in Substrate with these flags, they also you also get key store with the key associated with Dave. So that's a bit easier. And yeah, we have the file tailed. Well, there's no file yet. We first run it. Nothing happens, but we get a file. And let's see what happens. So yeah, some stuff happens. And we I think we jump back to block 98, and then we're kind of like screwed. But that's OK. I think we can still see some stuff. So at the initially, when the chain has was launched, we, we um, we, um, we select the validators on chain. This is the only one exception when the chain has launched because there are no authorities when we want to elect the initial ones, initial validators. Um, what happens afterward is that now we have an error length of 40 blocks. So some block number that we can configure before the end of the block, in this case, 34, we get a log from staking saying that election window has now opened. And a while afterwards, and we also see a log that says a solution has been validated and stored on chain. And this is a process at this point. Uh, I mean, at the moment, we are only seeing one of these. But if we have numerous validators and numerous peoples, they're kind of like fight each other off to get the best spot. Um, I, yeah, we might be able to see it in the future. No, we don't because the chain is stalled. Uh, but in this case, there's only one, and eventually we uh, we see a log that says new authorities has been elected with this method. Like the computation of this election was from an authority. We didn't compute anything ourselves, which is not what we saw here. And well, this is a new type of uh, problem that we have here, and the chain is stalled. So we actually see that. Uh, this mechanism has a fallback. If all validators decide to disappear and none of them submit anything, we are still electing new validator sets, but on chain. So if, yeah, um, yes, and we're not seeing anything further because we are stuck in this doom. Um, I can do something else though. Uh, should I continue, Joshi, or do like, yeah, should totally. I eat up yeah, like, as much time as I want? locally that don't sync that chain somehow, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, I can, I can do that. So uh, I, I had another method of testing this, which might be interesting for you guys to see as well, uh, which is running lots of nodes with Docker. Um, the thing is you cannot see, well, yeah, okay, you can see. We go here and, oh, that's clear. Let's see what we have. I, I use a tool called Blockade, which is, which I mean, was recommended by Andre, another one of our devs, the credits to him. Uh, it's a tool that spawns a lot of Docker images. Um, I can actually open my editor here, I think. Uh, you give it like a simple yam config file and it runs lots of Docker images based on this simple, YAML config for you. In this case, I'm running 10 nodes, actually, all from the same Docker image. Oops. All of them, all of them almost with the same command. It's a bit small. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, maybe this will help. Um, yeah, sim. Sorry, what? Yeah, that's good now. We can. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, all of them almost the same command. I'm only just exposing uh, some ports from the first one. Um, so we can connect a UI to it. And all of them also have uh, a key store and, a, and, this, and the same chain spec uh, attached to their containers. Um, yeah, and as soon as my Docker is up, which is now up, we can run this, and we only do it by saying blockade up. This takes a bit. Um, yeah, and then we have. Uh, I'm glad we did this demo for this tool alone. This is cool. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. it, when you give it the image on the right side, does it just know to go to GitHub, like parity text slash substrate? Uh, no, I built it locally, but I can send a, a link of how to do it again from Andre. He, he made a gist out of it how to build it. Um, 
somewhere in GitHub. I'll send it. But this is super easy. Like this is easy to do, but unfortunately we don't advertise it as much. Substrate has has two pretty good Docker files uh, included. Uh, one of them is actually from Will, who I'm not sure like he's with us or not. But yeah, one of them is actually from Will, and that's actually the one that I'm building now. So you can use those Docker files to build your custom Docker image. I mean, you can see this is not official. This has my nickname as prefix. Um, but then if you have it built mm -hmm. locally, then, uh, it doesn't even search in Docker Hub or anywhere. I'm here actually, but by the way, um, here if you're using an official name for an image like Parity Tech Substrate, it would actually probably check your system and say, hey, I don't find it. And then it goes directly to Docker Hub. That's the default location. Um, for looking for images. Okay, I see. So that's not a, like a GitHub reference. That's a Docker Hub it's, reference. It's not, yeah, exactly. It's okay. not GitHub, it's Docker Hub. And either you have something that makes Docker happy locally, in this case, it will not look any further. And if not, it will give you a little message and go in Docker Hub and fetch it yeah. by default. Cool. Yeah, there's also a simple script that generates 10 dummy key stores. Um, I think I have them here, like, I don't know, authority one. Some, there's, I haven't really looked into them. They're binary files from your key store, and I don't know how the default format of key store looks in Substrate, but um, yeah, it's, these are your keys. And I was just testing this today, and I actually found another Docker image, which, um, wait a second, another Docker tool. Wow, is this working? Oh, I don't have any. Okay, let me run this again, because um, I don't seem to have any Docker images. Uh, oh. uh, no, not any, no running containers, which doesn't make sense. I should have 10 of them at this point. So, that's strange. Ah, the network is also unknown. Oh, yeah, this is weird. Try, try to do a minus A. They are likely, um, they start and crash and stop right yeah. away. Yeah, exactly. So they do start as you want, but they don't seem to leave very long. Okay, and we have these errors in almost all of them. Okay, this one is unexpected because this this stuff usually. Uh, oh, but uh, but I know I know what this. Can you show me your your specs again, like your YAML, YAML file? Usually, this is when you mount a volume, and you kind of do a mismatch between a local folder and a local and and and. and uh, yeah, but uh, I I mean, all the directories are absolute, and actually, the, like I was playing with this almost like while you guys were on the call. I, I'm not sure why it's not working. Um, like it's unexpected, but the directories are correct. Like this is in my desktop parity testnet chain spec. And from there, a folder named key store. And we can verify it. Parity testnet. Yeah, check it. I, I got similar uh, problems. When you don't have the, the folders, it sometimes creates files matching the one in the container. It's kind of a bit of messy sometimes when there isn't something going wrong one time. So you may need to do some cleanup locally. Like clean all this. this yeah, check thing. check out if what you expect to be a folder is really a folder on your local machine. Yeah, yeah it is. It's it's right here. Okay. Key store. And then the chain spec is also here. Like you can see it. Mm -hmm. This this guy is right yeah. here. If you check my PWD and um Maybe try one more time and then, oh, let's see. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, here you, you show two different things. You tell Substrate to go pick up uh, the chain spec, you mount it to, um, to root, right? In, in the container. Is that yeah. right? Is that correct? Yeah. Ah, okay, I see, I see. I didn't see the, the end of it. Um, I think uh, maybe cleaning. Okay, so now almost everything is clean. I only have oh, this thing that I have no idea what it is, but this is something that I want later on. Actually, I should start it. Um, 
Okay, and now we can do another blockade up. Let's see if it works. Maybe 10 is too much. Okay, yeah, this could be it. Uh, let's, let's relax it a bit. Uh, there's no need to run 10. I mean, that's a bit too aggressive. Maybe my system is now doing too much and it's simply running out of memory. Um, down, up. Come on, you can do four. <laughs> okay, no, it's not giving me four. Why? That doesn't make sense. Um, ah, this is, oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. This is the uh, incorrect locate file. Um, okay, come on. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the directories are still correct, but we can comment some of them out. Four is enough. And destroy. Up. That, that probably, oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this seems better, right? So, or closer or different? I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, Docker is precisely for this stuff to not happen. Um, let's see. Mm. So what is Docker PS dash A? That's like listing all your containers that you have. Yes, and all the all the shutdown ones as well. In this case. Yeah, and A is for all actually. When you do a PS, it shows you only the running uh, containers. Okay. Which, uh, sometimes, uh, as we see now, sometimes they start and stop right away, or you stop them sometimes, so they are still hanging around but not actively running. Yeah. Yeah, maybe check the logs of the exited nodes. Uh, all of them complained about some missing file, but uh, the directories are correct. Yeah, that's uh, it's probably going to, yeah. So my, my take in this case is usually to take one, you know, to, to run one manually with these yeah. parameters, because there's probably a little typo somewhere that, that kind of propagated to all of them. Um, I mean, I was, I don't get this. I was running this while you guys were on the call. Yeah. This demo effect. So there is a small <laughs> difference. You forgot <laughs> that it's screwing up the whole thing. I can't see <laughs> how I have changed anything with it. Ah. I mean, the logs don't really say much. Let's use this tool that I have. Um, let me bring a browser to where you can see it. Uh, I think you can, yeah, you can see this now. And I think it was here, no? or maybe here. Ah, uh, yeah, it seems, oh, I mean, that error to me seems so like hard. for whatever reason, the spec file inside the container like is, is wrong or like Substrate was saying, hey, that where I thought there was gonna be a spec file, there actually was a directory or something. Okay. Um, is that, does that come from Substrate? No, 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 no. I, it's oh, really okay. a Docker issue. Oh, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a typical one when you mount um, stuff that you think exists locally, but do not. And as a result, actually, what Docker does is say, hey, look, in the container, I do have a file, so I'm just going to bring it locally. And, and sometimes what it does is not what you expect, kind of mixing up folders and, and files. Okay. Um... This. I mean, these directories are, ah, Jesus. Okay, yeah, never mind. I, I'm just stupid. Um, yeah, I, I was running something else before. Um, there we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, so now we, and this should be correct. Amazing. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I was just uh, yeah very very wrong about about the assumption that uh, the directories are correct. So 
Let me just uh, bring up the browser window again from this cool tool that I found today, which shows the logs. Uh, yeah, which shows you the logs. And I'm running something similar here, just with five nodes. So we get to see more sort of exotic error messages or, or generally messages at some point. Uh, let's just see where it goes. And for now, we have to wait until an, a new error is triggered, um, which I don't quite remember how long it takes, but I hope it's soon. Uh, we're also producing blocks. We're not finalizing. That's a different problem. I was, again, finalizing before, but not now. It doesn't matter. Um, I mean, I hope it doesn't matter. Um, while this is spinning, um, can, you, can you show your specs again? I'm wondering how your nodes are finding each other, because you're not providing any peers. Or, or did you no. put that in your chain specs? Or No, I'm pretty sure it's not in the chain spec. Um, but it's so how not, do they find each other? Uh, it's not needed. Uh, lib P2P has some weird thing where, not even weird, like some magic where if they're in a local network, they usually find each other. Ah, so OK, I see. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've experienced it too. Like if I run two or three nodes locally, you don't have to tell it anything. They just Yeah, just, just connect. They, they just found each other. I don't know how either. I mean, it's probably not that they, it, it's, um, yeah, it's uh, it's probably like flooding some messages on the local addresses, and then they ping each other back. Uh, so we see the same message here. Um, oh, or, these yeah. are like interesting messages. Yeah, we have more stuff here. So at block 18, the election window is open, so now people can submit. And at some point, it says, I found a better solution. And then four times in a row, it said, rejecting solution because the score is not good enough, which is because all the five validators are submitting the same solution. They're running the same off-chain code, and they eventually submit the same solution, and we reject the other four as soon as possible. And so, Kian, uh, just to throw back to, to last week, I remember you spent a while going through this long list of reasons that you could reject a fragment solution, and they happen in a particular order to reject them mm -hmm. as early as possible. And so, like, mm -hmm. this one, if I understood what you said last week correctly, like, each validator is submitting a solution and saying, this is my solution score. And these ones get rejected just because, like, hey, man, the score you said you got isn't even good enough. I didn't yeah, exactly. even bother to check whether you actually got it, but you're not even claiming exactly. it's good enough. Exactly, exactly. This is the check which rejects honest, honest solutions. Like, exactly, even this thing that you claimed is not good enough. So why would, like, in the, there is the case where you miscalculate and you're undervaluing your solution, but, yeah, that's not going to happen yeah. for anyone who's running a correct implementation. Yeah, ex that's exactly it. Um, uh, a while back, we see a log that says a better solution has been validated and stored on chain. This is like the this is like the tail of this log uh, because this validation takes some time. So while we are rejecting four solutions, uh, we it, then we eventually finish validating the first one and and finally, uh, I think in block. There should be some log here, yeah. And finally, a few blocks later, we say that we elected the new validator set. Uh, yeah, and I have another that. question for you. Somewhere yeah. up there, there was like logs from the transaction pool saying invalid. Oh yeah, it's like right at the top of your screen. Or yeah, you got it right there. Yeah. So are those extrinsics that are invalid? Are those the same ones that you just said got rejected because the score is not good enough? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I actually shouldn't have put two, yeah. They're exactly duplicates of one another. Yeah. Well, the one comes from the staking palette and the one comes from the transaction pool, I guess. Exactly. So are those getting rejected at the transaction pool level, like before they even get gossiped around the network? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, they get rejected. At, no, no, no. They get rejected at validation, which is the first time that transaction pool validates anything. Yeah. So we don't, we gossip everything around anyhow, I think. Oh, okay, okay, I, yeah. So they get yeah. gossiped, they get rejected by the transaction pool, they don't make it into the runtime, I guess. No, they, they don't even make it into being considered in yeah. the next block. Okay, right? cool. Okay, I want to quickly do something else. Um, 
So I have these guys here, their key stores. I'm going to delete these, this node's key store. If the node doesn't crash, this is, uh, yeah, it's going to be this one. Well, we can do it easier here. Um, I mean, you, you probably don't want to do any anytime anything like this in reality. But what I want to do is I want to delete this guy's. So at the moment, we see that all five nodes submit a solution. Four, four of them get rejected. One of them makes it in. If one of them doesn't have a key, then that's a new type of error. Because if you don't have a key, you're not, you, don't, you cannot sign your solution. You, you, you probably should fail. I have never tried this before, but let's just see. But I think if I delete someone's key store, then lots of things are going to go wrong. I mean, maybe this node just even crashes. Who knows? They definitely um, won't be able to cast grandpa votes or author blocks anymore. Okay, it's probably then going to trigger some, yeah, some equivocations as well. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, maybe that was too, too harsh. I don't know. It's a fun okay. experiment to try. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, we just got one around block 78 right now. So the next one would be a short while. Maybe let's switch to oh. one the other. So, hey, Kiana, I have a, a hypothesis about why you weren't finalizing blocks. Yeah. If your chain spec is expecting 10 validators and you only have ah, four right. online, yeah. Yeah. you'll never get a two-thirds threshold. Yeah. That's exactly it. Because when I was running while you guys were at the initial of initial at the beginning of this session, when I was running this, uh, it was finalizing as well, and it was faster. I like, which also makes sense because probably these four nodes have a hard time. I don't know why it could affect it, but it was faster. Um, okay, we should get the election window open soonish. I hope. Yeah, but we, nothing else seems to be going wrong with this node's key store being deleted. Except if it doesn't use its key store. Maybe, maybe Substrate keeps them in memory, which, oh, yeah. Maybe I'm it read sure. those keys when it booted up and now it doesn't need the files anymore. But that's generally a bad practice. Uh, okay, election window open. Now it's showtime. Let's see what uh, snapshot created. I remember oh. you talking about that last week too. And this is what I was looking for. So this node, so we now, instead of four invalid messages, we got three. And this node doesn't even manage to create a solution and propagate it because it got this error. No signing key. I, I cannot sign my solution, which makes perfect sense because these solutions that validators propagate, um, they, we, I mean, they're technically unsigned transaction, but they have a field called signature, which is the signed payload of the entire rest of the transaction. So this is great. This is actually one thing that I never tested before. Awesome. Um, cool. Is it clear, like, what's, what's happening? And it's, uh, yeah, this totally. note. Yeah, and, and the, the other nodes don't even see it. They, they only see the uh, two, which is being, well, the three. I don't know where is the third one here. It's probably being locked somewhere else. I hope so. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, two or two, yeah. Yeah, it's right. One, one is the one that gets counted. Two are not good enough, and the fourth one isn't submitted because there's no key. Yeah, the fourth one is not submitted. The, uh, let's see, the one other scenario that we could do is, but I'm not sure, I mean, we're, the, we're exactly on time. We can give it a try, but I'm not sure if it'll work, is there is another case. You have keys, you also run off-chain worker, but you're not a validator. And, but for that, yeah, I have to change the chain spec and that would take probably a lot of time with our rate of- Yeah, and I'm curious about that. Is it? It might not take a chain spec. Isn't it just a matter of running with like dash dash off chain always equals always or whatever? Yeah, but then that account needs to, yes, yeah, true. The, I, I was thinking it needs to like, um, it needs to like, uh, um, you know, um, needs funds and stuff, but it actually doesn't. So yeah, let's, let's try and make it in time. I'm gonna bring this down 
And I'm also going to recover my blockade file and run the whole thing now, like with 10 proper nodes. So now the addresses are incorrect. Um, uh, Kian, uh, can I yeah. interrupt you a second? Yes, of course. Uh, I have one question. How do you delete the key store for one particular node? I, 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 I lost that, that part. I deleted the file. I just deleted the file. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, now it's, it's in its data direct, like in when you do the dash dash base path, like key store lives somewhere in there, I guess, right? Yeah, it's somewhere in there. I mean, in this case, I'm, I am giving it a something called key store path, which I've never, yeah. But I think if you don't give it key store path and then just give it base path, then it's just going to put it there. Okay. Um, so now thank we're going to run. Oh, thank you. And now we're going to run with all the nine nodes. So these C0 until C9, they're in the chain spec as uh, authorities. Or, yeah, let's just go to the bottom of this file. Yeah, chain specs are so cool and you can learn so much, but there's this <laughs> practical yeah. problem of having a megabyte of binary data right in yeah, the middle. Yeah, it's very annoying. And my, yeah, <laughs> my system is now under lots of pressure, so it took it a I while. I'll just interrupt on that point. You can, uh, if you just, um, instead of wrapping it, you you force force it so that the lines don't wrap, then you don't get to see that blob of code. Ah, in there. right. So it goes all the way to the end of the line. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, actually, I shouldn't have even come here. It's not that important. I just wanted to say that those 10 validators are in the initial validator list. So, um, yeah, my, my, oh, damn it, this crashed. Okay, let's reopen it. Um, yeah, and did I change anything here? I don't say this. Um, yeah, so these guys, these guys are validators. Let's run a tenth one. Um, uh, well, no, that, that would be hard because it doesn't have key store. Um, the ninth one. Um, yeah, you can make it still bonded as a validator in your chain spec, but just not running as a validator. Like if you could just get rid of oh, it. I want the opposite, actually. I exactly want the opposite. Um, I thought you wanted dash dash off chain equals always or yeah I want this but I want it to be not a validator so we have to delete it from the chain spec but if you if you just d remove that dash dash validator like you did no I think because it's in the chain spec well it gets kicked out I, no I, I I don't think that matters okay. that matters yeah. okay okay I hope this is correct, like syntactically. I think it's a dash dash off chain dash worker. Okay. That looks good. Okay, we save this. And then, well, yeah, let's just try and open it. And we immediately scroll down without looking at that big thing. <laughs> and, I covered my eyes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping these are in order. And if I delete the last one, then or I can make this chilled, or oh, that's too risky. Let's just delete this. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this means that this last guy is now not a validator, C9. Um, should, should work, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. This guy is still working, and we bring this up. And now we're going for entire 10. Oh, damn it. Oh, parsing the spec file. Okay, so I made a problem here. Yes. There's a comma at the end, yeah. Yes, thank you. So we destroy and we bring it up. Now we should also finalize because we're expecting nine authorities and all of them should be online as far as I can think. Okay, it seems to have worked. Yeah, cool. Okay. 
So at the very beginning, we see that, hmm, well, I can't find it, but there's a, the, the very first validator set must be elected on chain. Um, but I can't see it here, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, you can see that we're also finalizing, that's good. And this last person, we're expecting this testnet C9 to raise some errors. But let's first wait here and wait until the election window is open so we can see it. I think it should happen around block 30 I, or, yeah. We can also connect this to polka.js apps actually if we want to. Maybe a quick one on the tooling in, in between. So this dozzle or drozzle is just to watch the logs of many containers, right? Yeah, but I it, found it like just today I was Googling. And, yeah. and, yeah. and what is blockade doing that, for example, something like Docker Compose is not doing? Seems to not be oriented anything. for tests. So yeah, exactly. I think blockade is actually way more limited than, than block compose, but I'm not using its feature right now. You can, uh -huh. for example, add some config here and say like network flaky 50% and then it f drops 50% of oh, the packet. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so right now you're just running the node no. and looking at the logs manually. You're not really using these features. No, 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 I'm not. Okay. And oh, okay. Sounds cool though. Yeah, it's, it's quite useful. Um, Okay, this probably needs to be debugged after this session. So we actually encountered a new error, which I was not expecting. Uh, all of the nodes, I believe, failed to compute the uh, compute any solution. Uh, this one may have given a different. No, all of them did the same. So yeah, but this I I have to debug it later. Um, hmm. oh, this is very valuable. Uh, error in the off-chain worker call. It says right. Yeah. Election. Yeah, I mean, this, this happens, election failed. It means that all the off-chain workers ran, but they couldn't finish. They, yeah. And now we're going to fall back to, to the on-chain election again. But this is an interesting scenario, and I should probably debug it later today. I, uh, it should have worked as far as I can think. Because, yeah, but let's first check that we see the on-chain backup, on-chain fallback, and then we can go to polka.js apps and diagnose it a little bit further. So uh, this is the case where uh, you have eight validators and one which is not a validator? Uh, actually, I think all nine expected validators are there. I removed one of them from the chain spec. That's why I expected it to work perfectly. But remove the 10th one from the chain spec, leaving nine, right? Yeah, I removed the temple. And I'm not seeing that epoch, the end of the era, even being triggered here. New epoch. There's a babe one that says new epoch three launching at uh, yeah, yeah, but a block state. app. Let's see. Um, let's, let's first see here. Ah, okay, so there are two validators that are offline. That's, I don't know why. Um, and let's see, ah, we're almost about to end the error right now. It should happen, oh, it should have happened by now. No, it's, it's not here. Yeah, I think something fundamentally is broken. Um, which is a very good thing. Like, yeah, uh, good to find. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good catch. Uh, but it probably needs further debugging, I think. Cool. Okay, should we wrap there? Yeah, I think I think from here on. I mean, it's pretty valuable for me to go debug with lots of additional people looking and giving opinions. But yeah, that's not what this session is for. So um, yeah, yeah, I think now is a good time to wrap. Maybe if this gets fixed, we can have a quick uh, prepared demo. Good. Okay, so wrap it here then. Yeah, cool. Thanks for showing again, Kian. Thanks everybody for entertaining me with Klecoin and uh, and Mate and Victor for showing your work with. Um, with yeah, it was 
It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see how that project works out and maybe even hack on it a little bit. Okay, see you guys all next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.